We're so close guys, just so freaking close. Hi, welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace and today I wanted to talk about kind of like pre-farming for alpha or like what should you farm in the alpha event? Just kind of like thinking along those lines, right? Like which of the stages are like most efficient? What you should you exactly do? But also on top of that, since we have like another two or three or four days, like what can you do right now to prepare for her? And so honestly, there is quite a fair bit that you can do to prepare for alpha. However, I think like the most important part in this video is is probably going to be on like the farming aspect of the event because this event is going to be a little bit different to the other ones in terms of recommendations however with that being said let's talk about like pre-farming for alpha first so before i get into the video i do have another video in which i'm doing a giveaway for essentially if you are interested in buying rainbow cards i go through in that video a way that can get you rainbow cards a lot cheaper a lot of people are questioning the legitimacy of like the method itself and my update to that is that app gallery has reached out to Kuro games and hopefully they are going to like resolve things okay so yeah, if you did want to save some money whilst buying some rainbow cards or if you wanted to actually enter the giveaway, then the link is down in the description below. However, with that being said, let's talk about pre-farming for alpha first. So guys, what we have here is a list of the materials required to max out a character in PGR and this is aligned to like a level 80 character. So before we get into it, massive credits to viclu 92 from Reddit and courtesy to the PP Guild in CN Server. That's, that's a fantastic name, guys. But essentially what we have here is a whole bunch of different materials that we do need to farm up if you want to max max out a character and their weapon. And the reason it's important to like make this distinction is because like a lot of these things we can't actually farm for, especially if you're like a free to play player or you're not going for alpha's weapons, just stuff like that, right? And so obviously what I really want to talk about is like the base case scenario if you are just going to get alpha. And so from this list, what we really want are these cogs. We want skill points. We want memory circuits because we are going to be farming for Bartons in the event. We're going to need the minor OC alloys as well as the major OC alloys, the memory OC circuits as well. And very, very importantly we need these construct exp pods because like in my last video i was like oh man i don't have to farm these exp pods well now i'm eating my words because like i have to farm the exp pods i've run out because like i was a little bit silly with my allocation of resources but yeah hopefully by day one you'll have like a reasonably strong alpha as well as like a pretty sick set of bartons obviously you'll have to farm a little bit longer to get that full set of bartons but like it is a good idea to farm for bartons guys do it i don't know what other people are telling you but yeah so this is a pretty decent guide and so obviously call you want as much as possible because everything freaking uses cogs but as for skill points remember that for alpha you're not going to be leveling her qte because like it's a waste of skill points she is typically a main dps and if you have like used your skill points wisely you shouldn't need to farm for this too much and so i would say that like the majority of the pre-farming for alpha is probably going to be going into your like overclocking materials as well as like your exp pods i know a lot of you guys have been running like the co-ops and so you should have like a crazy amount of memory enhances and so honestly with all of those materials that should be able to prepare you for like the Bartons that you will get. So what you're going to realize is that I did not mention AE4. And so for you guys who don't know what AE4 is, it's essentially like one of your main resources if you want to like go hard on farming for memories or six star memories in particular. And we'll talk about that very, very soon. You know what? Actually, I think this is a pretty good segue into the event itself. But if any of this is not clear, like if you guys are still not 100% sure on what you should do to farm alpha, I think it's pretty straightforward. Just drop a comment below or like come join the discord and we can just talk about it. Okay. And so guys, the next thing I want to talk about is the event itself but before we get into it massive credits to i'm ash yt for putting this one together and so this little infographic which has a massive amount of space in the middle for some reason i'm not sure why let's have a look at the normal stages and challenge stages so if you guys do play like arc knights or like alchemy stars or literally any other gacha you're probably going to be very familiar with this like you have some standard stages like your normal stages and then after all of that you do have these challenge stages up here that you can see over here on top of that we do have the event store down here however i'm just going to use this one because it's a lot more clear and so whilst we're on the event store let me actually quickly talk about this one first and for this one big shout out to you karashu anyway so the first thing you'll notice is that there are three highlighted entries over here we've got the kamui christmas sword the live reindeer memory and the christmas dawn blueprint now the reason that they're highlighted in red is pretty obvious it's because they're like christmas related items and so it's very very unlikely that we are actually going to be getting these three items and there is kind of proof of that and so what i have over here is this is the cn server of like when this event was running and so as you can see, there is that Christmas sword for 2,500 of the event currency over here. And so flicking back to this one, you can see all of the other stuff is identical to that list. However, somebody else has shared one from the Korean server. And so from this image, you can see that the shop is identical actually to the CN server, except it is missing that one. And so for you guys who aren't aware, the Korean server did launch like I believe one week before Global did. And so it's very, very likely that we are going to be following like what they're getting. Pretty straightforward to be honest, not much to be said there. However, let's start talking about the other 
things. So you can see that we can actually farm for eight Kamui shards. I would say that that is a very, very definite farm. However, on the other hand, we've got the max purchase limits on the Lucia gifts and the five star Kamui gifts. A lot of people are going to probably tell you to skip it. I'm probably going to tell you to skip it. However, I do know that there are a lot of people who like do want to like complete the event. And what I mean by that is like clear out every single thing that has like a max purchase limit. I think you're actually able to farm out all of the shards, all of those gifts, and like a couple of sets of the Barton memories before the event actually ends. Me personally, I am one of those people who do like to clear event shops. However, I think I'll be skipping these gifts over here. But if you are one of those people who are hell bent on doing it, I would definitely suggest clearing out the Kamui shards first, getting at least one set of the Barton memories, and then looking at those. I just know that there are a lot of you that do that. And like, you know, in another world, that would be me as well. And honestly, in this world, that could still potentially be me. It just depends on how I'm feeling on the day, okay? But generally speaking, like the most optimal way to do this is that you want all of the Kamui shards as well as about like three sets of the Barton memories. And for the Barton memories, typically speaking, you want the bottom row because Barton gives a lot of attack. And what I mean by that is that each memory, if you guys haven't noticed, is that they actually give like varying levels of attack. For example, Barton 4 and Darwin 4 actually both give varying levels of attack. But to be honest, for me personally, I'm at least gonna farm one to six because it gives me that flexibility to mash with any other set. For example, we got the free Darwins on slot one and slot four. So therefore I can use the Bartons on two, three, five, and six. Sometimes that extra little bit of attack is not worth the flexibility. Like, you know, if I can't even use my freaking Darwins with the Bartons, for example, then what's the point, right? And so why exactly do we farm extra sets of the Barton memories? And that is because like we want to be doing the resonance on it. For you guys who are unfamiliar with resonance, this is the resonance menu. Essentially, I have a Voltaire here. And so what I can do is I can slam another Voltaire into it. And as you can see, it does not discriminate between the numbers. So I can throw a five into like a whatever this one is. And if I hit this resonate button, it essentially gives you like extra stats on this Voltaire itself. And so there are a couple of rules in terms of resonance. Like, so for example, for five stars, you can like resonate on anybody. However, if you do resonance on a six star, let me actually try show you guys. You can see that it actually has a bind to a construct. So what that means is that this resonance will only be applied to the construct that you bound it to. However, after resonating your memory, you can still take that memory set and use it on another like character. However, like you're going to lose those bonuses. But if you take the set of memories that you put onto that character and put it back onto the original character that it was bound to, then the resonance effect will take effect again. So it's not like it's going to get overwritten or anything. And so again, you do need like duplicates of the memory, except like it doesn't discriminate between the numbers and you need to slam them into themselves to get some of the set effects. It's just stuff like giving you extra attack or extra defense. However, like in the end game, it kind of does make a difference, I would say. And so yeah, typically speaking, that's why you want three sets of Bartons, if not more actually. And with that, I think it's quite straightforward as to what you have to do here. So just to summarize again, get all of your A Kamui shards, get like three sets of Barton memories. And if you're really hell bent on it, you can get these at like the expense of your Barton memory resonances. With that being said, let's talk about the event stages themselves because there is a little bit of difference between each one. And so as you can see, you've got the challenge stages over here costing 30 serum. And for C1, C2 and C4, they are actually dropping 73 of the currency. On top of that, they are also dropping memory enhances. And so to compare those, we actually have these guys down here in which each stage costs 25 serum. They drop 60 currency and they are also dropping memory enhances. However, we have some dropping weapon enhances. And so in the normal stages, you're actually going to see that we have one that's a little bit different. This one's giving memory enhances as well as weapon enhances. And so how exactly do we know if we want to farm the normal stage versus like this one over here? Like what is the serum efficiency? In a nutshell, they are actually extremely, extremely close in terms of efficiency. If you want that extra little bit of currency, then you would be looking at C4. In the long run, if you farm C4 over S5, for example, I would say you get about like one to 2% more of the event currency drops. On the other hand, if you farm S5, you actually are able to get some of the weapon enhances. And so then it becomes the choice of like picking between one to 2% in terms of like the efficiency for the currency drops versus some of the weapon enhances. I think for me personally, I'm probably looking at the weapon enhances just because like it's a pretty big pain in the butt to actually farm those. And to be honest, guys, like the difference between S5 and C4 is just not big enough to actually argue about. I think the main factor is if you're farming S5, you're actually having a chance to get those weapon enhances. And I think that's a good thing. For me personally, I'm actually leaning towards this one, but like, I don't think you can make a mistake either way. And so guys, that is kind of like your first two choices. However, there is actually a third choice over here. So it's C3 and C5. And you can see that for 30 serum, we are getting only 11 of the currency drop. Now this does sound like crap. However, if you look over here, I'm actually not sure what they're trying to say over here, but essentially this is kind of like your equivalent to AE4 farming. And so that is a massive recommendation. If you guys are thinking about farming AE4 right now, stop.
not because instead you could be farming it during the event to actually get a little bit of extra currency drop to work towards the shop. And so now it becomes a decision of S5 versus C4 versus C3 or C5. Let's just say C5. And so the two choices here are, should I farm for like an AE4 equivalent, AKA like, should I go for like six star memories that are kind of random? Or should I farm for event currency and just grind out Bartons? Typically speaking, most CN players are gonna be telling you, you should be doing like the event currency grind, like the C4 or the S5. However, we are kind of like in a unique scenario where this is the first event and everybody's memories are actually not really juiced. Me personally, I can tell you like most of my six star memories are just not there yet. I don't even have like a 222 set on my main DPS. And so it's in this event that I would say that you can possibly farm C5, okay? However, if you guys have like completed your sets for your memories, like then like don't even touch C5, look at like C4 and S5. But I do think that a lot of people are gonna be behind on six star memories. And I think C5 in this first event is not a bad choice. However, if you are gonna farm C5 for those random six star memories, I would say do it after you've actually cleared out the shop. And so what I mean by that is that you still want your 30 Kamui shards and you still want those three sets of the Barton sets. Personally, I think that only after you've cleared out those shards and the sets should you actually even look at C3 or C5. And so guys, to summarize all of that, you have a few choices. When the event begins, I think that everyone has the same goal of actually farming out all of these shards and farming three sets of the Bartons. And to achieve that, you're going to be farming either C4 or S5. The decision between C4 and S5 is that for C4, you get like 1-2% to more currency efficiency. And for S5, you actually get some of the weapon enhancement materials, which is pretty nice. And so after you have actually cleared out the Kamui shards and gotten your three button sets, then you start looking, well, do I want to keep farming for currencies or do I want to look towards farming for random six star memories? And so it's at this point that you can look at your memories and be like, well, I've actually gotten a lot of the sets I want. And so if that's the case, then you keep farming for the event currency. However, if you're like me and you're still using like a bunch of scattered sets, then I would actually recommend going for C5. I think that like forming your six star memory sets outside of Barton is like just so important. And so guys, hopefully that is a pretty good summary in like what you should farm or like what you should get from the event shop as well as like which stages you should farm. And so guys, with all of that being said, I think there's nothing left to be said except for the fact that I am super hyped for this. Let's hope Kuro Game got it together and I'll see you guys at the first event. Otherwise, as for this video, let's start wrapping it up, okay? And so for this video, I do have a secret message for you guys and that is darkness. Wow, that's probably one of the edgiest secret messages we've ever had. But if you guys could drop darkness down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what it is. If you guys would like to support the channel, we have a couple of ways in the description below. We've got affiliate links, we've got a membership program thing. But otherwise, as Alpha once said, all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.